Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the Northern Illinois Dynasty. We are now 0-1 to start this series, and I am very, very excited to get into the season. But the road does not get easier this week as we take on Illinois. Remember Illinois back in the day had a couple of playmakers led by Juice Williams. He is amazing in this game, one of the best dual threat quarterbacks in this game. And he's not even probably their best weapon on offense. Aurelius Ben lines up at receiver, but he is not the only guy. They also have a trio of receivers who are really good phasing and also Jeff Cumberland in the slot as well. But Aurelius Ben is their star. He was a preseason All-American in this season. And they also have, I'm not going to try to blow his name, Humana Wanui at tight end, who played in the NFL, and he was a very good tight end. Now, last week, we definitely saw one of our playmakers have a good game, and it was DJ Perkle. I'm going to swag him out this game before the start of the next game because, you know what? I think we deserve some swag even during losses because this is going to be a tough season, so I want to reward the players who are balling out. So here is, here we go on the road. We're at Champaign and Juice Williams had five or two total touchdowns last year, accounted for five total touchdowns as a team versus Missouri as they won 34 to 10 to open up their season. So they come into this game, wanna know, here we go. The battle of Illinois as we are looking up at Illinois. Let's see what happens here on the return. Aurelius Ben takes it back to about the 30 yard line. It's actually phasing on that one. And now out comes Juice Williams under center this time. He worked a lot in the shotgun as a quarterback. He throws the left side, and that is a catch right away by the tight end number 16. It's another first down. It's a first first down for Illinois. So here is Juice throwing across the middle, and there is Cumberland for his first catch in the slot. Brought down by our safety number 26. That's going to be Jerry L. Aponte, who plays safety and nickel cornerback first down. Throw to the sideline this time, and that is incomplete. Looking for Aurelius Ben. And we decided to spotlight him after that play because we know they're going to go to him a lot. Third and eight. This is Juice Williams from the pocket. Look at the pressure. Nobody is getting there. Williams just moves. He's not going to scramble either. He just stays in the pocket all day and does find his man at about the 20-yard line. It is a first down. How about no pressure on that one? And now they're inside the red zone just at about the 20. His juice throws to the right side, and that is another catch by Humano Ahui. If I said that right, if I said that wrong, actually, I'm sorry. And now second and four, handoff, and this is Dufresne who gets up the middle and gets to about the five-yard line. NIU had a couple of nice plays on that drive, but now they're inside the 10 quickly. Handoff to Dufresne. He cuts back to the right. It's a touchdown. Illinois strikes first here at home, this sold-out crowd and they do take the seven point lead as Juice Williams leads a touchdown drive on that first drive. So here comes Malik Surratt back out onto the field. As last game, we only completed five passes. Hopefully we'll complete more today. We're gonna to start it out by handing it off to Brady King who had about 70 yards rushing in game number one. As we're gonna to try to pound the ball, we give it to him once again, cutting back. Brady King showing off the power, taking on two defenders as well. And he picks up about a gain of seven on that one, bringing it to a third and short. So right line up here with two tight ends on the field. Surratt tries to get out of the pocket, but he can't get away from the pressure. And Surratt will take the sack, fourth and two. We're going to have to punt. So here is Juice back out onto the field this time, trips to the right side. He moves and throws that way. He's got... His man, number 17, Cumberland, who breaks the tackle, and Jeff Cumberland will take it all the way. Desmond Roach does not have the speed to catch him. It's a touchdown. Big time play, but look at the broken coverage that time. We had a linebacker on their slot receiver. That is Wolfgang Mefti Masid. He is definitely not athletic enough to keep up with their slot guy. They kicked the extra point, and they missed the extra point. That's something that you don't see on NCAA 14 at all. 
And now Illinois takes the 13-point lead as here's Malik Surratt back out onto the field. And hopefully we can get a first down this drive. Surratt moves to the left side. It looks like he's going to take it himself. No, he stops and throws. And he's got the receiver, Nathan Palmer, who plays in the slot quite a bit. And that's a first down. I definitely need to get to know these receivers just a little bit more. I don't know where everybody plays as Surratt play action fake throws deep. And that is going to be knocked away from Jeremiah Wynn who had an open opportunity to make that catch, but it would have been a tough one. And now here we go. They send the pressure right away. Surratt gets hit on the throw, and they're going to call a flag on that play. Let's see what it was. It looks like it was just at the snap, so they're going to call it offsides on that one, encroachment. Now that brings it to a third and two. This time handoff. Brady King, does he get the first? And he does. They give it to him, moving the chains. So here we go on this drive. Two first downs, better than the first one. Play action fake again to Brady King. Stepping up in the pocket is Surratt. Moving to left side. He's got an open man downfield, and he forces it to him. And the cornerback makes an excellent play on the ball, but what are they going to call? Pass interference on the defense. So we do catch a break that time, and we get a free 15 yards. So here is Surratt now. Play action fake. Quick throw across the middle, and that is Travis Hammond who had catching – opportunities in game one that he just did not take advantage of he had a wide open touchdown on a fourth down play and now he gets his first catch of the game here's Surratt once again scrambling up the middle and he gets taken down for about a gain of three Nardell Hairston checks into the game now for a third and six here is Surratt moving away from the pressure he's got nobody to the right side he will take it for a first down Stepping out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. Moving the chains. We're looking good on the second drive. Nice long drive put together by Surratt. This time, good protection up front. Surratt runs out of time, and he tries to buy some time to get up the middle, but the pocket was going to collapse. He loses three on that play. Running Nathan Palmer in motion this time on a second and 13. He pitches out to him for an option. And he picks up maybe a gain of seven. Nice little play on that one is that brings it to a third and six now at about the 11. Looks like Alexander Betts, who he's looking for, got jammed at the line, but Surratt trying to get away from the pressure. He at least buys some time, but they have the spy on him, and he's going to get hit throwing the ball, and that one will result in a field goal. So 13-3 to three here as Juice Williams is back out onto the field. Here's another pass to the sideline. That is Jeff Cumberland again. Another catch for him. He's already over 100 yards. We just started the second quarter, and he's already over 100. Juice from the pocket, clean pocket, throwing to the right side, and he's got his man on the sideline throwing off number 10. That is going to be Deron Miller Jr., who couldn't make this tackle. So they're already on the other side of the 50 now as we try to send more pressure, but it just does not work. They're picking up everything. Juice, he's just sitting in the pocket all day, throws. It's Cumberland again. He breaks the tackle. It's a touchdown. 20-3 start here for Illinois, but look at this pocket. Just clean. Nobody could get to Juice Williams. It's a touchdown. It looks like we're going to have to look for some pass rush. That could be our weakness on defense as we're back on the next drive. Here's a quick throw across the middle. That is Alexander Betts who climbed the ladder to go get that catch. So close to the 45. Four yard line just about here is Surratt moving to the right side pressure right away he gets away though he's going to pick up a first and a little bit more he slides down it's about a gain of 15 nice little scamper on that play so Surratt now hands off to Brady King and we're going to try to get him the ball and maybe the style of offense we're going to have to kind of play is giving Brady King 15 you know or so carries a game as we throw across the middle and that is Alexander Betts Another catch for him. That one moves the chains. Betts has the best hands on the team. He's going to be looking to get the ball quite a bit this year as we hand right back to Brady King to the outside. He does not have that elite speed, but he gets about a gain of five, bringing it to a second and five. Quick throw, and that is Jeremiah Win. Finally, we get Win the ball. He is one of our most dynamic receivers. We're going to have to line him up all over the field. So first and goal, run the option, pitching it out to Brady King this time. Breaking a tackle, it's a touchdown. Brady King is in right before halftime, 33 seconds left. What a great call by the coach there, running the option, and Brady King breaks a tackle, and that's what he does. He's a power back, and he's in for the first touchdown of the game for NIU. 
So Illinois does have all three timeouts left here as they do have about 33 seconds left as well. This one will be kicked deep. This time, 11 has it, breaks a tackle, and he's off to the races. He's going to take it. Nobody's going to catch him. He's got too much speed. It's a touchdown. Wow, what a return by Faison. He gets in, and that one opens this game wide open. We had a chance there right before half, but now it's a three-score game, 27-10. to 10. What a turnaround. So now we start the second half here down by three scores. Not exactly what we envisioned after scoring that touchdown with 33 seconds left. As here is a handoff. That is Nardale Harrison in the game. Picks up a gain of three. So Brady King checks in. We run a little option. Surratt puts it on the ground, and it's scooped up by our offensive lineman. But I think his knee was down. So third and five now. Surratt, he's just going to try to scramble and pick it up himself, and he does. He's got more as well. He gets to about the 34. Way to use your legs, Surratt. That's what we need because right now we not, we're not able to throw the ball at all. Option play on a first and ten. This is a pitch out to Brady King, and he picks up just a gain of nine. Shoestring tackle on that one. Doesn't have the speed to hit the home run, but at least he can pick up some nice first down plays on that one. Here is a second and one, a pitch out to Nathan Palmer, and that one will get us inside the 15. Another option play for a first down. Looks like we're pretty successful running that. It's running the receiver in motion, maybe a little fake that time as Surratt runs out of time. That is a sack. We tried to get it to the receiver coming across the middle. That was Jeremiah Wynn. Instead, it's a big time sack, third and 23. Throwing to the right side. Surratt just does not have the arm to get there, and it's knocked away. And we will bring in our kicker, that is Salerno, into the game. And Mike Salerno knocks it through. And now it is still a three-score lead, but at least we get some points on the board. Actually, a two-score lead. I'm bad at math. Here we go. Juice Williams in the pocket this time. Throws across the middle, and that is caught. And that is going to be a big-time game. Across the 50 right away, it's a first down. And now here they are across the 50 once again. Can our defense come up with a stop? Juice Williams under center this time. We at least get some pressure, but he throws it to Dufresne. Off to the races, to the 20. Spinning around, still on his feet. And taken down at the 11 by David Bryant. It's a, or Nathan Brooks, I should say. It's a first down. So Dufresne inside the 10 now, handoff. He gets to about the two-yard line. Opportunity for a stop here on a third and two, and it's just too easy for Illinois. Dufresne scores 34-13, as this game has just been crazy so far for this NIU squad all around. We have not been able to stop them on defense. I mean, they have Juice Williams, one of the best quarterbacks in the country right now. As here's a throw across the middle, and that is picked off. Surratt overthrew Nathan Palmer, and he can't take him down. A pick six the other way, just like that. Illinois is just putting it on us now. You can already see the difference in skill levels here between the two squads. And now here we have possession back here before the end of the third quarter. Here's a quick throw across the middle, tipped. It maybe should have been caught by Brady King. 39, quick throw, Nardell Harrison gets lit up. And he cannot hold on to that one. And now, I mean, what do we have to lose? Fourth and nine, down by many scores at this point, 41 to 13. Surratt moves to the right side. Nobody to throw it to. He's just going to try to take off, but he can't pick up the block from Travis Hammond. It's a turnover. This game is way out of hand. So we move on to the fourth quarter now as we bring in the backup quarterback that is Boone Logan into the game, and he hands off to the right side, and that is going to be a big-time run. Nardell Hairston showing off some speed to the outside. So that's going to bring us here to uh, to a second first down play. Here's a quick throw across the middle, and that is picked off. I said Boone Logan earlier. It's Boone Wilson. He throws his first interception of the game. And that absolutely defines this game. We can't move the ball on offense. We can't stop them on defense. That's just the type of game this is. Illinois is way above us right now, way out of our class, way out of our skill gap. 
And I can't wait for Mac play. Maybe we'll have some closer games there and get some wins. But I think we're just not ready for, you know, these Big Ten schools to play them, the Power Five schools. I think we're just outmatched in all of these games now. We do have Stanford still on the schedule as Boone Wilson does move to the right side on a third and 16. He tries to show off his legs a little bit, but he just does not have the speed. We definitely need to clean up some things, though. We definitely need to find a way to get our receivers the ball, and it seems like that is what we're going to have to really, really improve on, our receiver play, because right now we're not doing Malik Surratt any favors, and that's how this game went. We can run the ball pretty well. We just can't throw the ball, and it resulted in a 47-13 to loss on the road. We didn't have high expectations for this game, but still, it wasn't fun. Malik Surratt ran for 63. Those were That was basically all off scrambles. We had a couple of option keepers for him. Brady King ran pretty well, 52 yards for 11 attempts. But how about Nardell Harrison? We'll have to get him some more carries. I wanted to see what he can do late in that game, and he actually impressed. I'll have to run the option a little bit more with him. And I'm thinking about bumping the quarter length up to seven minutes because I'm seeing that, you know, I'm, I'm seeing stats that I like, but not enough. So I want to see some more attempts. You know, more rushing attempts by both teams. Definitely want to see that. So I might bump it up to seven minutes. I want to see how it would do without the runoff. So I will probably bump that up to seven minutes a quarter. That's what I usually do anyway. I just want to test out six for the start of this series. But I will bump that up to seven. Juice Williams went 11 for 13. That's what I'm talking about. Only 13 attempts for him. He needs a little bit more. And they absolutely dominate us. But Aurelius, Aurelius Bend was not even a factor in that game it was all Jeff Cumberland so as we move on to week number three I really want to take a look at this squad and evaluate every position because we have one more non-conference game left before conference play and then we have Navy in the middle of our schedule that'll be our last non-conference game as well but I definitely want to see some improvements across the board I think that our pass rush is pretty poor, but we do have some improvements here. We have a couple of receivers who went up in awareness, and Brady King actually went up in break tackle plus two. But here are options at receiver. I mean, we don't have many, so we'll have to see what happens with, you know, kind of the rotation right now. So next episode will be the recruiting episode where I do review the recruits and no custom recruits this year, but I will rename them, and I will talk about that next episode as well but really i think we know what we want to go after now in recruiting we've seen a couple of games sample size and i definitely know what i want to go after so i hope that you guys enjoy that next episode we get to see recruiting and then we'll start to see recruiting every single episode pretty much just a little bit at a time so don't go anywhere make sure you hit subscribe hit that like button and stay tuned for this series it's gonna be a whole lot of fun stay tuned let's get it Let's go. I'm about my pledge, which I'm decked up on blue bills, and I won't stop until the cash pit looks like fall leaves in the bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bull. Quick to save my peace, I'm so after school special. She brainy but them jeans looking like.